Welcome back. This is the third video of three in my series of how the early calculators computed the transcendental functions. Um, here, with this example, we'll really show um, why the algorithm is well suited uh, to those calculators. So, um, I'm going to compute log of 187 in base 10. Okay, and I'm going to show kind of the, the registers that the calculator is going to have as we go here. Uh, so, in base 10, the first First, let's assume that our calculator is uh, using BCD, binary coded decimal, and it's also storing the number as, uh, in scientific notation essentially, so it's storing the number as 1.87 times 10 to the 2. So the first thing that the calculator will do um, is it will say, okay, since I have times 10 to the 2, the logarithm needs to start uh, with 2 plus the logarithm of 1.87 according to the rules for logarithms. So what I really need is the logarithm of um, this 1.87, and I'm just going to add 2 to it. Okay, uh, so let's see here. So notice when you do that, that's going to put a bound on the size of the first um, exponent, if, if you were worried about that size of the first exponent. So doing this in base 10, uh, we pull off uh, that kind of problematic thing at the beginning, and then I'm always left with something um, between 1 and 10 that I'm computing the logarithm of. So here's the idea. I have two columns. Uh, in one column I'm multiplying, and in the other column I'm adding. This column is going to be approximating 1.87, and this column is going to be approximating the logarithm. So, this column starts with a 1, this column starts with a 2 uh, from that 2. Okay, so that, that 2 is used to start the logarithm column. Okay. Um, so what I do here is I multiply by those numbers you saw in the other video, the 2 the 1.1, the 1.01, 1.001, okay, uh, in this column. So let's see how it works. Um, so I start with a 1. When I multiply by 2, the first number, I see that the number has gone over 1.87. Um, so I don't want that. So I'm going to go back and go to the next multiplier. So I go to multiplier 1.1, and here I have 1.1. Then I multiply by 1.1 again. 1.21 by 1.1 again, 1.331, and I do that until I go over again. So here, I've got finally gone over 1.87 again. Okay, then I'm going to switch to the next multiplier. But before I do that, let's see. Remember, the real advantage of this algorithm is that the calculator can really only do a few operations efficiently. Um, one is shifting, okay? and the other is adding. And so remember, 1.331 here is computed by taking 1.21, um, shifting it one place to the right, and then adding it. So that 2 is plus 1, right? Um, this 1 is plus 2, and then you have a 0 here plus 1, and that's how 1.331 is calculated. It doesn't actually need to do a full multiplication, it's simply a shift and add. Okay, once I go too far here, then I go to the next multiplier. I do that a few times. Now I've gone over 1.87 again, so I change to multiplier 1.001. And I do this um, until I go over again. Now I'm ending here with this um, third decimal place um, instead of the fourth as I did in the first example. Okay, so the idea here is what I've, what I've determined is that 1.87 is 2 to the 0 that zero is because I couldn't multiply by two even once before going over. Okay. Then times 1.1 to the six. That's because I had six 1.1 multiplications. 1.01 to the five for the five 1.01 multiplications. And 1.001 to the four for those four. Okay. Uh, the real secret though is while you've been doing this, you've also been computing the second column. So by the time you're done here, you're also done here with computing the logarithm. Let's see how that works. So every time you multiply by 1.1, you add log of 1.1. Every time you multiply by 1.01, you add logarithm of 1.01. And every time you multiply by 1.001, you add that logarithm. Remember, those numbers are stored in the calculator's memory as constants. Okay? So you mirror this multiplication, which is a fast multiplication, uh, with addition by constant, which is in the calculator's ROM. Okay, 
So I've just written it out here. So I've skipped the, I haven't added logarithm of 2 because I didn't multiply by 2. Okay, but I add logarithm of 1.1 six times because here I multiply by 1.1 the six times. So I keep a running total here. The calculator doesn't even ever need to know these numbers, right? The calculator is doing this um, one step at a time, right? It doesn't actually ever really compute the 6, the 5, and the 4, okay? It simply does it some number of times until it goes over, then it does the next thing some number of times until it goes over, then it does the next thing some number of times until it goes over. Okay, in the end, what you've done is you've reconstructed the sum, which we know is going to compute the logarithm. So uh, the 2, which is from this 2, plus 0 log 2s, plus 6 log 1.1s, because you added that 6 times, 5 log 1.01s, added that 5 times, and 4 log 1.001s, because you've added that 4 times. Okay? Uh, so that's the secret to how this is done on the calculator efficiently. Uh, just for completeness here, let's see how you could reverse this operation and compute an exponential function. Okay. Um, so let's say that I want to compute 10 to the 2.72. Okay. Uh, you'll see I'm, what I got here in the end is that the logarithm was about 2.2. 2716, so I've rounded that up to 72. Okay. Um, so this should be a slight overestimate of, of our original 187. Okay. So first you notice that uh, that 2 is essentially the exponent you're going to need in the end. Okay. So you could store that as the exponent now, um, or just ignore it and put it back on at the end. Okay. Uh, so again, we're going to have two columns, one for multiply here and one for add here, okay, to reconstruct this, except that the logic is going to be now on the add column, okay? So let's see. So again, here this 0.272, that's the logarithm of 1.87, okay, about, and then here this 10 to the 2.72, that's going to be the exponential that I want to compute in the end, okay? Of course, times 10 to the 2. So let's see. So here on the logarithm side, the addition side, I start this side with a zero. Okay. I try adding log two, but that's too big. It's 0.3 something, greater than 0.272. So I skip that, and I add logarithm of 1.1. Again, these, addition, these constants are in the calculator's memory. So adding log 1.1, I can do that. In fact, I can do that several times before I go over 0.272. When I get too large, I switch to adding 1.01. I can do that several times before I need to switch to adding log of 1.001. Okay. Um, this is as far as I'm going to carry the calculation, but really the calculator is going to do this down to whatever smallest constant it's holding in memory. Okay. So now the logic is on this side. When should I switch to the next constant? And this side is simply following. So this side starts with a 1. Every time I add log of something here, I multiply by that something here. So I skip multiplying by 2, and the first multiplication is by 1.1, then times 1.1 several times. Again, this is fast because this is simply a shift and add operation. Okay, then I mirror it here. Now I switch to adding log 1.01, so here I'm multiplying by 1.01. Okay, then when I switch to adding log 1.001, then I switch to multiplication here. Uh, here, in terms of what I have now, is my... Um, approximation of the original number, 1.869 times 10 to the 2. Um, but of course, we know that actually I should get something over 187 because I rounded the logarithm up in the third place. And so the idea is that you should carry this down to um, your machine precision or the smallest um, constant that you have, and when you do that you'll get 1.87068 about times 10 to the 2. Okay. So, now you've seen that essentially the same algorithm can be used to reverse the original uh, procedure. Um, if you're clever, you could see how a very similar algorithm could be used to carry out regular multiplication or division, and some calculators implement multiplication and division in that manner. Um, okay, but you've implemented the logarithm function and the exponential 10 to the x function on your calculator. Um, let's say that you want to implement other logarithms and exponentials. How do you do that? Well, other, other logarithms are easy. You can now do those via change of base. You need to compute two logarithms, then divide, assuming you've implemented division. 
um, how are you going to implement uh, b to the x or other exponential functions, arbitrary exponentials? Um, you do this with a formula which is familiar to anyone who's used to working with slide rules. You compute the logarithm with, logarithm with base 10, you multiply by x, then you compute exponential with base 10, and this will compute b to the x. Um, so now you can implement um, any logarithm and any exponential function on your calculator, very limited resources. Hope you enjoyed these videos, and leave comments.